quick intro into how the uh, ArcGIS can be used to convert LiDAR data into a terrain for use inside uh, ArcMap. Uh, one of the things that, that isn't mentioned in the video but is very important is you need to make sure that you have licensing for 3D Analyst and that the 3D Analyst extension is turned on. Otherwise, a lot of the things uh, won't show up in the menus and, and won't work if they do. With that, though, on uh, our catalog of how to uh, import LiDAR data into ArcGIS. Uh, basically, uh, what we have here is, a, is Arc Catalog, not Arc Map, Arc Catalog. And so uh, what we want to do is to uh, create, go to the place uh, in our file system. So we're going under the folder connections. We're going to go to the place we'd like to put it. I've set up a folder called Test LiDAR. I want to um, uh, open that one. And then I want to uh, do a new uh, file geodatabase. Okay, and it's, uh, it's going and creating my file geodatabase there. Taking its own sweet time as it typically does. And I'm going to rename that to, I'll just call it test. Okay. Uh, the next step that I need to do is within that file geodatabase, I need to create what's called a feature class. So I'm going to click on that file geodatabase, and I want to do, a, or excuse me, a new feature data set. Uh, okay, it then comes up and asks me what name would I like to have, and I'll just call it uh, test1. And then uh, I'll go to the next uh, bar there that's off the bottom of your screen. Okay, so I'll click Next. And then it asks me what coordinate system I'd like. In this particular case, I know that my LiDAR data is in state plane, and so I'll, I'll use that. And it's in uh, Harn U.S. feet. And then we've got to go down and find Virginia South uh, for this particular data. And then it asked me for a vertical coordinate system. I want the North American, and I'd like NAVD88 because that's what that data uses. And then it asked me uh, some additional questions about tolerance and things like that. I'm going to accept the defaults on that and hit finish. Okay, so now within our file geodatabase, or we now have a feature data set called test. Now we'd like to actually add some data into that. To that, for that, we're going to, to scroll down to our toolbox, and under 3D Analyst Tools, there's conversion, and under conversion, there's from file, and under that, there's last to multipoint. And so we're going to select that one, click on it, and again, wait interminably while it comes up. Okay. There's our last multi-port point tool there. Now you can choose, by the way, a directory here. So you can choose a folder, in which case it will it pull in all of the last files from inside that folder. And that's a huge time saver. Because if you're doing individual files and you have a lot of them, my finding has been if you select more than about 50 files, the loader malfunctions and it starts putting weird, weird characters and nothing works. In this case here though, we're just going to do a couple of them, so we're going to do files. I'll hit the open button to browse and uh, I have this one under, uh, or let's see, we need to go where the data is, which is on this, on my computer, it's on the, the um, E drive. Again, the, the long wait. Uh, yeah, so we'll go to the, and then we'll go into, I'm going to use some of the, the one meter LiDAR data, because that's the stuff in state plane. Go to LiDAR, go into the LAS data. I'll select us uh, three of the tiles. Hit OK. And then it's going to populate this list here with those uh, ones that, that we had listed. We then need to tell it what the output feature class is. Okay, so we need to go to our uh, feature data set and, uh, and then add a new name for the, 
for the feature class that we're creating, and I'll, I'm going to call it uh, multi-point or, or my multi-point. So for that I go to my folder connections, uh, let's see, it's in my uh, uh, it's in my work folder there. And then we'll go down to, um, uh, somehow I got into the sitemap directory there. Let's see, and we call this one test LIDAR. And there's my test geodatabase. And there's the test, and now I can give it the name. So uh, my multi point. Okay. We then have to say what the average spacing is. In this case here, it's about, um, uh, in this case, it would be about every uh, three feet. It's a roughly one meter spacing in this. Uh, then we can, uh, if we wanted to use class codes, we could put those. We can also then select which returns we'd like to have. In this case here, we'll just sort of request any return, so we're going to be getting back all of them. And then we can also uh, include some input attribute names, just for fun. I'll, uh, I'll pull up the list there by, by clicking here. Again, taking its own sweet time. And I'll just have it do the intensity and the return number. Okay, and then the input coordinate system, which is optional. And I'm going to uh, select that and projected state plane. Uh, let's see, Harn. U.S. feet. It's, uh, for some reason, we're sorting in reverse order, so Virginia should be near the top. Virginia South, and we just hit OK to store that coordinate system. And then the file suffix is alas, and our we don't want any sort of a Z factor. We don't want to blow it up. If we wanted to change it into meters, we could set that to point uh, three zero two eight. Uh, whatever uh, we would like there, but I'm just going to leave it in, in feet there, and so I can hit OK. okay. So I think it's uh, thinking about it there. Now what's going to happen is it should pop up a little button, a thing on the bottom that says that it's doing that importing. So it's uh, we can also go up here to geoprocessing and look at the results window. Look at the current session, the last multi point. And see what it's doing there. Let's uh not seeing any messages yet. So this has got the the info information on it there. And it's uh seems to be running sort of slow there, but we'll Give it a second. Uh, usually, as this is doing it, it will actually give you a readout of maybe uh, how much it's gone along the way. I don't know why the output feature class is still empty at this point. I would have thought that it would uh, be processing a little faster there. So yeah, I'll close the results window. And I will just going to pause this until it's finished doing the import. Okay, our uh, last multi-point tool has indicated that it, uh, it completed uh, uh, properly uh, by a little message box that popped up at the bottom of the screen. So we can now go into our test data set and we can see that we've got my multi-point. Now what we can also do is now go to test and right click on that. And then we can tell it to do a new terrain. Okay, this is where we're going to create, take and combine the data from the multipoints actually creates a, a sort of a tin-like surface for it. And uh, in this case here, the points are about three feet apart. And I'm going to call it Test 1 Terrain. That's fine. Hit Next. And then, uh, uh, let's see, um, so I can uh, click on this if I want to uh, uh, change some things about it. Uh, 
but uh, but that's fine this is a shape thing and those are basically mass points so I don't need to do anything else on that uh, I'll let it use the, sort of the default way of doing the pyramids I'll tell it to calculate the pyramid properties okay so now we've got all of our, our settings together with the, the pyramids and then we can hit finish and now it says a new terrain has been created would you like to build it now and we'll say yes and it now goes off and starts uh, starts building the uh, building the pyramid or, or building the pyramids and building the terrain again this process takes uh, takes a little while so I'll uh, I'll pause things there before we take a look at it okay it's completed now and what we now see is that we now have our test terrain data set as well as our multi point data set stored inside our geo database or within our uh, feature data set stored inside our geo database let's uh, take a look at the test terrain there and see so here's uh, the information about it and uh, we can click preview and we'll see what it looks like okay yeah it doesn't in in arc uh, uh, catalog it doesn't well I guess it does do some okay so there's um, a preview of uh, of our terrain there obviously it hasn't been sort of color coded well and things like that so it's a bit ugly but anyway we've now got our lidar data into the uh, into the system Now let's uh, open up the terrain that we've created. I've opened up ArcMap. We'll hit the Add Data, and I've uh, this is now na already navigated to our uh, test GDB. Uh, we'll go in there and we'll pull up our test terrain. So there is now our terrain, and it's got the the elevation measurements on it. Uh, I'm not exact. Some of this may have been marsh and things like that. Let's do our zoom in. Yeah, we can see the the details there. Uh, it looks actually like this must be Fisherman's Island. I think I recognize that curve on the uh, on the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel there. And we can actually get down to the point where we're seeing the the individual polygon the individual tin elements associated with the things and let's see what the identify tool has to tell us about anything uh, okay so yeah if you do identify it will give you a readout on uh, uh, on you know what your location is what the elevation is what the slope is and what the aspect is uh, which is a, a handy thing to be able to do uh, so we've now got our, our data and we're ready to uh, to start doing some analysis with it. Now we can also convert this obviously into a DEM or something like that, but that's a whole different process, so I'm not going to talk about that now. Thank you. Enjoy.